I have finished my vintage junk journal and wanted to flip through and show you how I've done it. Uh, the front cover has a picture from the internet, which I downloaded a lot of pictures from the internet and so I could, you know, keep with the vintage theme. And this one is called The Bridesmaid, and I really liked her a lot. Um, it's got a little layer of coffee dyed cheesecloth and some scalloped edging scrapbooking paper and a doily along the spine, along with a little doodad from my jewelry area. The whole cover is covered with a scrap of Nuno felting reject or test or something that ended up in my scrap pile. And the clasp is a hairband attached with some knots and some jewelry hardware here and a coordinating button. So I did download a lot of images from the internet. I picked and chose the, the ones I thought were pretty cool. This one, and some of them do already look aged, but then I did do coffee dyeing on some of them, and then I did like, uh, you know, some, some inking around the sides to make it look older. And this is the five piggies and their various personalities. Uh, a little uh, stacked lace and fabric and a little yarn as a topper, and this is a piece of scrapbooking paper as a backing. Um, this is just a little bag that I sewed around the edges and some lace and jewelry finding, a little ribbon. And this image came from a book on how to do sketching, how to draw people. And that's just a dictionary entry there, or a dictionary page on the back. And I put a few cards with some pre-done images from the internet, and this is a card that came in a pack, decorative cards, and just so with the edging around it to make it a little bit thicker. Now, a lot of the images also came from this old magazine from 1928. So I got a lot of cool images out of here. And one of them, there's a couple right here. This. I'm not even really 100% sure what some of the ads were for here, but, and I would clip out just these interesting little tidbits. I think this was for flour, and this was in the ads section. So I got a lot of use out of that magazine. For 450, I sure did get a lot of images. Here's an internet printable. You could get the front and the back printable and then just glue them together. Little rickrack and yarn ribbon. Now this was on the internet too and I, I chose funny old ads like this because they really are quite entertaining to me. Um, if you can't see the the fine print it's really just for your complexion and you're supposed to wear it at night um, to make your, your skin nice. And of course she's pointed out quite prominently so nobody misses that. A um, little quote with a little picture of a tree. Here's an ad from the, uh, the magazine, and a little tiny tuck spot for these sewing-themed tickets, which I thought was kind of neat. This printable is on a um, several layers of sewing pattern tissue, just to make it kind of thick and interesting textured. Um, some old tickets, and a little stub. On this page, I had done some decorative stitching with my machine on the top and bottom. This was uh, the front of a uh, post-it note pack with a little charm on it, attached on the side. And this is just really blank and a cheesecloth bow. A little layered tag with a button. Um, uh, some of these paper clips, I aged them myself by painting painting it with black and then um, sort of splotchily painting on some metallic gold or bronze after it. This was a cereal bag. I got it out of the cereal box when it, when it was brand new so it wasn't very wrinkly but I've wrinkled it quite a bit since and just sewed the tops and bottoms and put a little seam binding and cloth on to keep it from raveling. I've got the 
the pink from Shears edging. And this crazy picture of a goat. I just love him because he's so scraggly. It's just kind of ragged. And a book page on the back. These paper clips, though, you can buy at the craft stores. And those are just a little bit, they're smaller than the normal paper clip, but they're, you know, sort of that funny old, old fashioned look. And this is just something I stacked together from scraps an old, a little piece of paper towel, a scrap of bag, and uh, let's see, just scrapbooking paper and something from my jewelry area. This was a cocktail napkin and I used it because of the drab colors and scrunched it up and sewed it across and then added this little string of plastic pearly beads and the buttons. When, when I do the buttons like that, I usually put the thread through and make it look like it was sewn on there, but I've actually put the thread first and then just glued the buttons on. And one of my stamps and sewing around the edge and some little blingy spots. Um, this guy was cool because he's actually a, re a flippable image and I, I think it's because it's a playing card because of the J and the Q, but I'm not really sure what the I is for, but I thought that was quite funny. Deviled ham spread for your next party. Naturally, a little ticket with some stamping. This little milkmaid um, was part of an ad from the magazine and I embossed the edge of it. it she's taped or glued onto music music note paper, a little bit of shiny tool, some embossing of gold, and some coffee dyed cheesecloth. Here's the other half of the bag. Now this was from that same sketchbook about learning how to draw, but I did take some colored pencil and color her in a little bit. Okay. And I have an image of where to buy cheap meat. I think we'd all like to know that. Um, on this side, I have the envelope flap. I don't have the whole envelope. This is just the triangular part, and it's just glued here to make it a little spot to tuck things in. Um, this is some cheesecloth and yarn into this hole here for a tag. Um, he was in the magazine somewhere, and so was that. There was an ad. I made it thick so it sort of looked like a postcard. Scrapbooking paper. I'm not sure how you get the exercise here, but apparently that's what you do. Uh, when I did have a lot of scraps, I would just simply stack them up, just pieces that were cut from just doing this and other projects, and I would I sewed it along the top with a little piece of lace and added a pin and a button and a little tag. I also like to take these old-timey pictures and add text from a different source to make it look like they're saying it. Um, I believe this was from a children's book, so I thought that was kind of cute. Black stockings die. Um, on this edge, I took the cheesecloth before I, I put it in the book and I laid it out and um, brushed it with some, some watered down white glue. So I'd make it stiffer because it is on the edge of the page and it would just fray and be way too fragile if I didn't do that. So, and some white rickrack. And this is just a little area to tuck things and embellish with rickrack and eyelet lace and a little banner thing. This uh, little envelope I made from a book page. And inside you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's, it's lavender buds. So it just makes the book smell good. And I just love the look of the cats on, on this. I just think the cats' faces are just hilarious. Um, I assume it's an old uh, magazine cover. Here's some layering with uh, lace, cheesecloth. This My Grace guy was uh, the name of an Etsy shop I bought something from once years ago. 
and in here is a bookmark with one of those round tea bags in the back of this. And this was an internet printable um, scrapbooking paper. And then scrapbooking paper all along the bottom. And then I came around and, and folded it up. And then the sides are sewn so that it makes a little pocket with another ad. And up in the corner is oh, it's just a little stacked banner scrap paper bit. Um, some coffee dyed tool and a pin. These kind of pins you can buy at the craft store. Stacked little corner decoration and a mini file folder. Shrew. Sewing machine. I guess warranty card or something like that. The uh, uh, music sheet folder part is embossed with this sort of vintage snow embossing powder. The garter belt, I, I had wished that I had a real garter belt so I could have put it from coming from the top and the bottom of the page and clasp it right here. So maybe if I ever, you know, get a hold of one, I'll add it to this page. But I added the lace and I, I added the sequins and the beads also just so it was something a little less plain than just lace. Um, so she she doesn't have any feet. I printed her off the internet, and as we all know, uh, printer ink is quite expensive, so I didn't want to reprint her, and so I might add something in the future so it looks like she's standing in something, but for now I left it because actually I think it's kind of funny that she has no feet, and aged the paper and put some little um, layers down. This is from a sewing pattern. If you look at it closely, you can see that. So I just sort of accordioned it up and folded it and zigzag sewed it down with some funky yarn that I have that looks sort of vintage in between the zigzags. All right, this was an old timey way of, we would look at little scenes of pictures and they would appear to be moving. Obviously it's been much faster than this. But it added some color to the book. And this was actually a paper bag and just one brad holding this in the center. And I made a second one in the back with a different scene. I just pasted the two together, these little boxes, boxers. And that's what the machine used to look like, Zoopraxiscope. That's pretty neat. Internet printable, some stacked fibers and a button. Um, another stack of just scraps that are sewn together at the top, although uh, I have a couple of these in the, from the magazine of order forms where back in the day when you wanted something you'd have to write to the company and they would send back whatever you were requesting. This was a how to build a birdhouse feeder, or probably a pamphlet or something, which I just think is so neat. Um, this is from a scrapbook. See, even a little dad like that came from that magazine. You just have to look for the tiny details. Okay. Um, this is scrapbooking paper just glued um, on this side and this side to make a pocket. This was a printable off the internet. Um, this was a tea bag, scrunched up and added some sequins to it and place to just jot something. Um, she did have a vacuum cleaner that she was holding and I cut that out of it and she sort of looks sad since she's looking down, but she used to be looking at a vacuum cleaner. So that was what that one's about. Um, these were scrapbooking papers that were pre-printed like this and I just made them double-sided so they're thick. And another stack of just simply scrap bits and sewn along the top. Uh, I'm not sure if this was the original name of a typewriter or if this was a whole different machine entirely, but I just thought that was kind of cool. Calligraph. Sort of like calligraphy. I don't know. A little sheep tag. This is the other side of the folder from back, back here, so it's the same thing. Um, that's a real snap that I put on this piece of paper 
for just embellishment. And this tag is just a little shiny around the edges, a little bit of lace and a pearl button. And now for my favorite thing in the book, cocaine drops for your children. Why not? Here's the other half of the bag from the Zoopraxiscope. I just shortened it a little bit so all the pages weren't the exact same width for interest. It's an ad for children's reins. Also inside here is a key that could theoretically go in here if that actually was a locking thing. And the key and the lock sort of have a little continuity to do with this, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a chastity belt. This is sort of the naughty page. Here she is in a corset, and this is probably the guy that's in charge of the chastity belt, but I don't know. Um, here is some cheesecloth actually glued to the page, so it's nice and textured and flat. I actually kept gluing things on this page. I, I wasn't happy with it, so I would put more stuff over the top of it and cover up the previous layer. Good morning. Have you used your pair of soap today? Are you fresh? Contemplating life. Cigars for your asthma. Yep. This is the only actual vintage thing in the whole book, which I got at a yard sale a few years ago. So that's the only real thing that hasn't been artificially aged to make look old. A little stack of banners, another little stack of scraps, but this time not sewed, but with a brad. Um, I made the texture on this little envelope from laying a doily down and then patting the ink over the top of it to make it look older. Oh, here's that same sewing card, and a couple little blank pages there. And these gals are having a tea party. This edging here, I had gotten in a discontinued bin at a, oops, sewing store. And it was just a little something interesting that wasn't eyelet lace or lace itself. I just thought it was an interesting sort of shape. Um, a little cheesecloth uh, through the hole with a bow with just embroidery floss. And this is just a scrap piece of scrapbooking paper, as is this sewn together. And this is a Starbucks coffee cup sleeve, the kind that protects your hands. So it's just flipped inside out and I did a little painting on it with this girl with the wash tub. And this is a little mini book. And if you can't make it out, it's the three little kittens who lost their mittens. And it already was kind of uh, uh, aged looking when I printed it. And then when I coffee dyed it, it got even worse. But I just went with it because it just looks like it's super, super old this way. And this is just blank inside. And then this cat tag. Um, it just for just because this is cats um, really doesn't look vintage or anything so I just added it because it was about cats and last but not least this little girl I've been using I've been waiting to use her for literally years I've hung on to that for the perfect project so I think this was the perfect place to put her and here's the hair tie a little closer look with holes poked through and then just something to keep it from pulling out. And that's it. That is the end of the junk journal. Hope you enjoyed it.